So hi everyone, my new book Lanchin in your pocket beginner's guide to building gen AI applications using LLMs is out now on Amazon. The book is already a bestseller as you can see it is trending on hash 3 on Amazon bestsellers. So go get, grab your copies and find the link in the description below. Thank you so much. So hi everyone, today we will be talking about a new extension to the Langchain family that is Langgraph. It is a new product launched by the Langchain team and it is a completely different package. So eventually to pip install Langgraph you need to use uh langgraph separately and it is not included in langchain so first of all we will try to understand what langgraph is what is its utility and then a small demonstration so let's get started so first of all before starting off with the code that i'm showing here you need to understand what langgraph can be used for so basically before understanding langgraphs we need to understand the concept of chains and agents in langchain so chains can be taken as programs that are written around llms so like for example if you have an auto sql chain in that case there would be some code apart from the llm that would be connecting with you the db retrieving the table information and then the llm comes in and then the output so eventually there is a predefined steps that are present in the chains so uh chains are pretty useful uh, for when the use case is quite static but when you want to have a dynamic use case like you, you want the chain to counter and say for example generic questions also like for example for an auto sql chain if you say how do uh, what are you doing in that case the chain may break because it is not able to follow the predefined step that are assumed for an auto sql chain right now second uh, part is agents so agents are basically uh, you give them some external tools like for example google search it can be wikipedia search it can be access to some db and then you give it a prompt and eventually the LLM will understand what uh, next action should I be taking and then take the action. So chains are very static. Agents are very dynamic. They are very, very flexible. Now when you're working with uh, real world problems, when you're working in production grid problems, you want something in the middle. You don't want to be as static as chains, but not as dynamic as agent where you don't know what action the agent might take. Right. In that case, land graphs can be very useful. So basically they can be taken as a more flexible version of chains where you can introduce cycles and custom logics very easily. So basically as the name suggests, picture that the Langchain team is trying to create is of a graph. So in this case you will be having nodes, you will be having edges, you will be having conditional edges, you will be having graph state. So let's understand and then finally we will visualize how it works. So let's get started. So first of all. I would be loading an LLM. So this LLM I am using from the Hugging Face API token that is flat T5 base just for demonstration purpose. You can use OpenAI model also. You can use Olama also that I will be discussing soon. Now the uh, most important part of a lang graph is the lang uh, graph states. So basically these are the variables that will store the information and hence eventually in throughout the flow of the problem solving these variables would be available. So here you can see that I'm having three variables, question, classification, and response. It's very easy to understand. I think you will be making sense later on how uh, we are using graph states. So for now, you understand it as variables to store values. Now, here you can see a few functions, classify input node, handle greeting node, handle LLM, by. So basically, the nodes in a lang graph are functions that would be doing something and then updating the value for the state variables, as you can see here. So you can see here, uh, in for example in classify input node i am taking i am getting the value for the variable question and then for, uh, passing it to the classify function which is nothing but gives you an output as greeting or non greeting as easy to understand and then updating the classification variable value with this value whatever we got from the llm similarly handle greeting node is a static function handle llm is eventually it takes a prompt and doing something similar as we did in classify but in classify we have a prefix attached to for classification purpose here we are asking directly the question and by is again uh, it is giving a static response very similar to handle greeting node now we are adding these functions as nodes so basically whenever the flow goes through these nodes that particular code snippet would be executed i think i would be showing the final graph so you will be able to make better sense here you can see that we have added four nodes into the graph Classify input, handle greeting, handle LLM, buy. It's a very easy one. Now, we're adding up the edges. So, which edge connects to which node, right? So, there is a special type of edge in a lang graph called as end, which determines that the uh, flow has been executed completely. So, this is required. 
so here you can see that we are first of all setting up an entry point that can be taken as a root node from where the entire flow will start and then i'm adding three more edges handle greeting end handle llm by by end so i think it would be quite easy to understand so if you encounter handle greeting you would be going to end if you encounter handle llm you would be going to buy if you encounter buy you would you would be going to end and now there is a conditional edge that i'm adding so conditional edge is basically bi bi directional tri directional flow where depending upon a function we would be choosing the node so in this case as you can understand uh, as i have added an edge here eventually the llm would be going from this particular node to end from this particular node to buy from buy to end but in case of an ed conditional edge it would be first executing a function and then choosing upon which function to which particular node to go so i think this logic is quite clear if the classification is greeting i would be going to the handle greeting node else i would be going to the handle llm node now i have completed the entire graph and then i will be invoking it a question how would how is everything so if you see how would how is everything how would the flow would have been looked so here is the pictorial representation of the entire graph that i have got so we will start we will go to classify input this is the entire graph that we have built as you can see now as the classify input Uh, the prompt is hey dude how is everything it will classify the input to decide the next node it will go to the conditional edge as you can see as the entry point is classify node the decide next edge it should go to classify and if the classification is greeting it would go to handle greeting as you can see there are two possible paths to go so depending upon the conditional edge output it would be choosing handle greeting and then going to an end so this is the whole uh, the representation of the image as you can see here the next question is tell me about humans tell me about humans the classification is non greeting so you will be going to classify input then the conditional function and then this time it would be going to handle llm as you can see because the classification won't be non greet would be non greeting and then by and then end so this is how the entire lang graph looks like so here you can see that there are several advantages of lang graph uh, basically it's a very baseline example i have already shared uh, an advanced example how you can improve rag results so you can check that out where i have introduced a uh, self cycle so basically you can introduce cycles you can introduce custom logics if you want to save llm hits you can make custom you can make default functions for example if it is greeting then eventually i don't want the llm to reply rather i want to give a custom i want to give a static reply so in this case it can be very very useful and lang graphs provides you with a lot of opportunities to build out more complicated use cases and eventually as i was mentioning some of the best multi agent conversational frameworks that are coming like autogen crew ai some of them uses lang graph as their base so that's the best part eventually it is enabling multi agent conversations for in lang chain so that's the best part uh, you can print the graph like this also as ascii or as a image as you can see here thank you so much I hope you understand lang graphs and you can build out more complex uh, solutions over it. Thank